Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, on the net since 2000 and still going strong. If you feel like you're not getting the real news, if you feel like you're not connected spiritually, you have found your home. Maria covers a wide range of topics as only a snarky New Yorker can. Straight up, no chaser. No censorship, no corporate sponsors, thus true freedom of speech. Your subscription gives you unlimited access as a member of the smartest audience on earth. Relax and enjoy the education. Now here's Maria. Good morning world, Maria here alive and kicking. Welcome to Awaken with Maria and Monica. And today I will tell you this before we get started. This is going to be a show on spiritual truth and spiritual weaponry. Okay, none of us are helpless. Some of us don't know what we need to do to make our lives happy. That's what we're going to talk about today. So my guest and my co-host, my friend, uh, is Monica Sepulveda. You can get over to her site, Monica with two N's, dot com, and check out all the teaching, all the classes, everything she has available. Uh, So good morning, Monica. Hey, we are alive and kicking. We are. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm in a good place. Well, I'll tell you what. Besides my doctor telling me I could live 30 more years, I just had uh, my Vedic astrology done, and he told me the same thing. So I, I might be it. the first 50-year run podcast on the internet by the time I'm done. <laughs> uh, so, so you're going part two into your life now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, I'm, we have some serious fire south of me, and I want my audience to know, if you can't get me on the phone, if you can't get me online, they are trying very hard to keep all our electric and power lines going in the middle of this fire, because Arizona's as backwards as the rest of the country, and all our lines are above ground, right in the middle of a 14,000 acre fire. Uh, so don't panic and know that I'm smart enough to get out of Dodge when, if and when I have to. Uh, so I just wanted to preface that because, you know, in this town, if we get a slight wind, we lose our internet. So, Oh, my gosh. That, the last time I lived, it was just like that. I know. It's it's annoying. A few drops of rain, bingo. The electric, everything's gone. Everything's out, yeah. So we have these fires, and, and you and I were just briefly talking about it uh, before the show. And, you know, I've had plenty of experience with fires since I've been living in Arizona for 30 years. Uh, And as a teacher of the medicine wheel, there are things you can do when you work with the elements. My teacher, Sun Bear, specialty was bringing rain. He was called to different parts of the world when they were in drought, and he would bring the rain. And Sunbear used to say, you know, people accused him of doing something supernatural, but he said, but it was always very natural for us to interact yeah. with the elements, you yeah. know, before the world changed and all the controls came in, you know, uh, between religion demonizing what was natural to Native Americans uh, uh-huh. and, to, uh, yeah, and to all of us. Uh, so, you know, I, as I said to you before, you know, fire is a living energy. Fire yeah. is alive, and anybody that doesn't get that has never really seen fire. Oh, well, I'm from California, so I'm very familiar. <laughs> right. And, you know, several years ago, I had property north of where I am, and there was a huge fire coming. Uh, and I was on top of a mountain, and as people know, fire burns up. Uh, and it had engulfed a lot of the Tonto forest here. Mm. And there I am on my property while everybody's evacuating, packing their stuff and leaving. And I went outside with a huge glass of pure, clean water. And I poured that water on the floor to inside my medicine wheel uh, as an appeasement, as an offering to the oh, fire. Yeah. And I told the fire, I understand you need to live. You're a breathing thing. But I would really appreciate it if you take a turn and go away from my property. Yeah. And I explained how it was a sacred space, how I live in harmony with nature, who I am and what I do. And I offered the water to the property. Needless to say, it never came to my property. It stopped basically less than a half mile from my property. That's how it works. 
Exactly. There's a solution to everything when you understand the energy. You know, and I, like I said, I posted a whole bunch of stuff on Instagram today, and it, it, I'm under Monica Sapolva. But there's great quotations, and it talks all about everything being living. And we're connected to all of it that people don't understand that everything, even inanimate objects, are also very much alive. Exactly. So, and if wow, it's, that's a great right. story, Maria. Well, then, tell you what, a week later, our friends who had property even north of that, it was in a town called Young, uh, they had called us because they had to evacuate their property because there was fire very close, and they needed us to help them empty their trailer and get them safely out of there. So mm-hmm. we drove up there, and they had a little girl. I can't tell you, Monica. Maybe she was five years old, a little daughter, cute as a mm-hmm. button. So while all the men are moving all the stuff, I looked at this little girl, and I said, you want to help me put out this fire? And she looked at me. You know, kids are great. Oh, yeah. And she says, well, what do we have to do? And I says, we have to build a little medicine wheel. I said, and I gave her paper and crayons, and I told her... <gasps> I let her draw the medicine wheel, and we taped it to the window of their trailer. And then she came out with me, and we made probably a little four-foot medicine wheel. And I had her, because she belonged on that property, I had her off of the water. Needless to say, a week later, I got a call from her father, who was delighted. He said, whatever you and my daughter did, our property was not touched. There you go. And he made me one of the most beautiful metal medicine wheels. It must have been about five feet tall to hang on my house as a thank you. See, listeners, listen to this story. This is why Maria is so good with medicine wheels and with Ray Key. She's got a lot of information. These testimonials are fantastic, Maria, because I used to have a big fear of fire. I must have died. Oh, no, I did. I did past life. I did, yeah. All right. I have and, fear uh, and a fascination with fire. So, oh, not me. So for me, for me it goes <laughs> both fear. ways. But I don't know, Monty, if you remember. God, it had to be 20 years ago when Florida was in a severe drought. And Florida was on fire. And it was a week that I had planned to go to Florida to, you know, fly there and visit my yeah. sister's. And they came and picked me up. I mean, every place from the airport all the way to Cape Canaveral was nothing but thick smoke. And I saw the uh, governor of the state at the time. I don't remember his name. He literally had given up. He came on television and he asked everybody, the only thing we have left is everybody please pray for rain. Because they, they weren't expecting rain for two more months. So I go down to the edge of the beach with my sisters because at least the air was clean there. And I did like, a, you know, you know how kids draw in the sand, you know, or, yeah. uh, you know, how they make these little sand creatures, castles, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting by the water. My sister and her girlfriends are a little ways away from me. And I decide, well, I'm going to draw a medicine wheel in the sand and ask the ocean to bring water. Okay. Oh, yeah. My sister and her friends are rolling on the floor laughing at me, okay? And the wave came in, and I I posited that when the wave comes in, it would take the wheel and bring some rain. Well, the wave comes in, takes the wheel, nothing happens, okay? So Uh my sisters are now really laughing at me, and I said, okay, what did I do wrong? And I said, okay, I'm going to make a bigger wheel, okay? So Uh I make this bigger wheel, and I'm sitting on the beach, And I'm watching and literally saw with my own eyes, everyone did, uh, the ocean started to rise into the air like mist and created clouds where you could see where the ocean water and the clouds literally met in the sky. And all of a sudden, I'm telling you, Monica, all hell breaks loose. We just had enough time to run from the beach to my sister's condo, which is, you know, just maybe 100 yards. It was coming down like cats and dogs, okay? Oh, yeah. When I went into my room, the radio was on, and I hear a song that I had never heard before, never heard since, and the, the song, the line I hear when I walk in soaking wet was, how does it feel to be a rainmaker? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, this, this demonstrates also the power of every single individual when we utilize tools. And, you know, here in, in San Francisco, you know, California, we had a drought for seven years. Right. No water. We had to take, like, three-minute showers, if not, you know, like, uh, what do you call it, the sponge bath showers. If you used over 50 gallons a day, they'd fine you. I mean, we had strict, when you took the shower, you have to put a bucket in there and collect that water, and, and that's how you water your plants. I mean, there were so many rules. Mm-hmm. So finally, in San Francisco, uh, the natives decided that we needed to pray, all of us. So they selected a time, and we all went into prayer, and the next day it rained. Well, that's so great. I'm a collective, a collective force of people getting together, you know, like, of course, I'm a, you know, metaphysical minister since 1972, right. and I know that where two or more gathered in, in his name, quote-unquote, it shall be done. So, of course, collective prayer always works. That's Absolutely. Why you should always call your friends to see something. Have them pray for you or call Unity Prayer Group, which is great. It's right. free. And right. uh, there's so many things you can do. But each person has power. Right. And when people say, when people, when, you know, I think the worst part is when we act like victims. Because that's the wrong response. The key is this is an opportunity to empower yourself and show what you're made of. It shows your character and it allows growth to happen, which is what's happening during this pandemic is people are starting to really, really reflect and realize that instead of it being a bummer, look at it as a blessing, right, you know? Right. And so when you tell your wonderful stories about what you've done, it's because you're exercising. This is not a miracle. This is this is life in action using the right tools. This is called perfectly natural, not supernatural. And here's the other interesting part. My sister uh, gets a phone call the day after from this Native American woman that she knows very well. And the first thing she said to her was, is your sister in town? And my sister Rose said, yes, she is. She said, please thank her for bringing the rain. No. I walked on the beach and this woman had a little kiosk where she was selling, you know, little trinkets and whatnot. And as we're, you know, plowing through the hot sand, she just takes off from her booth and comes running towards me and hugs me, a total stranger. And I was taken back. I said, what the hell is this, right? She says, thank you. Thank you for what you did. So people that are spiritually awake can recognize the light in someone else. And Absolutely. It was an amazing thing to me. And the reason I wanted to tell these stories was because I, you know, you know, as, as you know, I do a lot of readings just like you do for people. Yeah. And a lot of times people, <laughs> right, and a lot of times people are, how could we say, um, uh, just lost, okay? Uh, it could be they took a new job. They don't, they don't feel right about it. They moved into a new house. They don't feel right about it. Uh, you know, things like that. And yeah. uh, a lot of times I find myself, and, and I've done this even when I was teaching over in Tuscany many years ago, uh, telling people when you arrive in a new space, it's your duty, and people don't know this, it's your duty to introduce yourself to the yeah, spirit absolutely. keepers of that space. Yeah. And you need to not only introduce yourself, say what your purpose is, let it know that, you know, them know that you're not there to harm anything or, or break anything or create a problem. Uh, and for me, this has worked my whole life, walking into the ocean, stepping on a, a, a jellyfish, not getting stung because I had already introduced myself and my purpose before I stepped into the ocean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that you need to do the same thing, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new house. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to introduce yourself, even if you're on vacation. Yeah. You know, I remember I was working with a business partner out of Vegas, and we were putting together a golf tournament in Kauai for the high rollers in Vegas. And it just happened the weekend we go there, there were two hurricanes headed for Hawaii. And I remember sitting opening night with the whole group, and the winds were blowing like crazy, Monica. And mm-hmm. everybody, all the golfers, was asking my partner, well, we got a hurricane coming. What are we supposed to do? You know, are we still going to be playing tomorrow? Because it was wild, okay? Mm-hmm. 
my partner knew what I do. And she looks at this whole group and says, don't worry, she'll take care of it. And I looked at her <laughs> like, what? You know? I love it. So I said, I what do you it. mean I'll take care of it? She said, she'll take care of it. So I go back to my room and I had a lanai. And I went out on the lanai. And let me tell you, it was blowing like that old movie, Hurricane. Okay. And mm-hmm. I decide that I'm going to call on Pele because Pele is the goddess of Hawaii. Right. And I called on Pele. I introduced myself. I told her who I am. I told her I come in a sacred manner. And I asked her if it's possible, please steer those hurricanes away from here. Well, interestingly enough, the next morning, it was like nothing had ever happened. And the hurricanes turned. They actually announced that Mm -hmm. on the news. And funny as it is, talk about a little extra from spirit. It ended up hitting one of the islands that the military stores a lot of their military weapons on instead. Uh, But this is something that people don't know about that need to know about because it makes your life easier. Do you mind if I interrupt you here? Because there's something that you said that just triggered a thought. And, you know, as intuitives, we get our information so quickly, and if we don't say it, it's gone. Right. (laughs) You know... Everything is living. Everything inanimate has, you know, if you look under a powerful microscope, you see protons, electrons, and neutrons, and you, they're moving. They're not standing still, so everything has consciousness. So what I've gotten into the habit of, and I always tell people, especially people that say they hate their home, and I'm like, what did the house ever do to you? Mm. Why did you take a hole in it? You know, it's like, the, how abusive. The house has consciousness, and if you're trying to sell your house and you're being mean to it, you're not going to sell it at all. It's going to make you stay there. So what I do every day is I tell my house how much I love it, and I actually name everything. I have a name for my car, Ms. Emerald. My house is called (laughs) the Empress Lady Coco because she's beige and brown. And my new car is going to be called Cherry Baby because it's red, can have full red. So I give a name to everything. I do, too. My house Lady Blue. So every single morning I always say, I love you. Thank you for taking care of me. I take care of you always, and I, I revere you. You are so wonderful. You take care of all of us, and you protect us. So when you talk to things, your car, especially your car, if you're going to get a a flat tire, you're going to end up in front of a gas station instead of the middle of the freeway. You know, you get the best of all scenarios. So what Maria is talking about is the consciousness that everything has, and she knows how to manipulate that, and yet we can all do it. It's not, it's just she's giving you the way. Book a session with her. She'll show you exactly what to do. I teach lessons, too. So I don't care. As long as you get this information and start taking your power back, right. that's the most important thing. People don't feel powerful. I'm just one person. What can I do? Everything. Right. Well, I want to give you the, I want to give you the end of that story because I know you're going to love it, Monica. The next day, they had a tour in the hotel. It was a, we were in a five-star resort. They had a tour of oh, all nice. the gorgeous artwork and statues and everything going on. So I signed up for it because I was still an artist at the time and I wanted to see. So what am I wearing? I put on white jeans. You know how thick jeans are, okay? White jeans, a white shirt. You know, my handbag is white. And I joined this group of about 20 people. We're walking all around. We're seeing all the artwork. Everything's gorgeous. And then I looked down at my handbag and I noticed there's some kind of thick, gooey ash on it. And I was like, wow, what, where did I rub this against? Well, I go back to my room to change to go down to the beach. And as I take off my white jeans that are still sparkling white all over the outside, and my legs are covered in that same black, gooey ash. And I was like, what in the hell is this? Okay, so I did everything I could to scrub it off. You know, some people want to say, oh, you know, it's probably the sugar ash. Well, how did it get through my pants and not dirty my pants? So I go down to the beach and this uh, big native kid comes over to set me up on, uh, on a lounge chair. And I said to him, let me ask you something. I said, something really weird happened to me. And I tell him what happened, right? So he looks at me in in a thick Hawaiian accent. I loved it. He says to me, are you here on some spiritual journey? And I was. I was going to give a lecture that night. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, and he starts laughing like that guy that used to do the coffee commercial. And he goes to me, this is exactly what he says. He goes, that's just Pile. She's fucking with you, man. 
<laughs> so I guess she wanted to give me a high sign that I owed her one. <laughs> God, that's a riot. <laughs> but listen, I have never understood people that are okay with just living this flat, three-dimensional life here. Mm -hmm. When you open yourself up to the spirit world and you're really living your life in a sacred manner, your life mm -hmm. becomes magical. And I don't know how else to say it. So if you're moving into a new house, first thing you want to do is a beautiful send-off and thank you to your old house. But once you Absolutely. get to that new space, whether it's a house, whether it's, you know, another country, another state, first thing you want to do is do something sacred. Let them know you come in a sacred manner. You're not there to harm anything. You're there to beautify the space, to love the space, to enjoy the space. Uh, and watch how quickly everything turns around. Always. Really fast. And... Especially people that are going through some hardships right now. They don't know how they're going to pay their rent or whatever. When you love your home, it actually manifests the money that you need in order for you to stay there. It's an amazing thing. And, again, miracles are normal. In fact, I just I put in, um, a quote today that talked about miracles. It was, I think it was Da Vinci or, um, oh, my gosh. I think it was Einstein. Uh, maybe it was Einstein. I know. Einstein's one of my favorites. Uh, oh, don't wait for miracles. Your whole life is a miracle. I love that one, too. Right. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's about how everything is light and sound, and, it, and it's always listening. And especially when you're speaking the word like you do, when you speak the word out loud, that has more power than anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even thought. Absolutely. Even visualization. You're speaking the word from yourself, and that is impactful. Right. Well, you know, years ago, something I don't want to ever do again, I used to do ghost busting. I mean, that's the, be the best way of, you know, describing it, chasing bad yeah. energies out of people's homes. I yeah, actually made I the front page of the Arizona Republic several times for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember this young woman, she was probably in her early 30s, she had a little son. She and her husband had this beautiful home, I believe it was in Tempe, it backed just to a preserve. It was beautiful. It was a two-story home. It was really nice. And this girl had been through everybody, from the Mayo Clinic to you name it, because she was very deathly sick. She couldn't even breathe. She had like one of those breathing tubes that went through her whole house. When she ran out of medical options, she had seen an article of me blessing some of the stores that some of my friends uh, uh, owned, uh, and I would go in and do blessings, and a lot of Native Americans did that at the time as well. And she she was out of options, so she called me. And I said, well, okay, I'll come down and, and check it out. Well, let me tell you, when I go down there, it's unbelievable. I, there was one room that I couldn't even walk in. I, I tried to smudge the room, and it blew the smoke back at me, okay? <laughs> I was like, holy, Hello. I was like, holy crap, what's in this house? And I'll say, no, I don't think so. Right. And I said to her, I went, I said, well, I got to look around your whole house. And I went up to her bedroom and she had this gorgeous uh, deck outside her bedroom, which overlooked her backyard, which goes to this preserve. And I said to her, look, I need you to get out of here. I need to be in here alone. You know, I don't like anybody seeing how I work. Okay. And I didn't want her energy throwing a monkey wrench into it. So I go out on this deck and I just put myself in a meditative state. And I asked Spirit, show me what happened here. And bingo, right in her backyard, there was a kiva. And a kiva is an underground place that Native Americans hold their ceremonies. Oh. And if you see, sometimes you'll see these statues or, or uh, figurines of mm -hmm. uh, Native Americans climbing out of a, what looks like a tube on these ladders, which are all over the Southwest as decorations. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an underground meeting place. And that's where they would hold their sacred uh, things. And they show me, because remember, I'm an artist, so I get my stuff visually like a movie. Yeah. And they show me this kiva, and they take me from this porch, in my mind, inside the kiva where they were doing the butterfly celebration. Now, the butterfly celebration was when young women uh, became women, when they got their menstrual cycle. Everybody in the village would come and celebrate, young people, old people, everybody. They made a big deal out of it. 
and I'm watching the celebration and it's beautiful. And all of a sudden, in come the blue coats with the bayonets. Oh, and they slaughter each and every one of them. And what they tell me is she was one of the blue coats. And I said, well, but she's not that person in this lifetime. What can she do to make up for this? They gave me specific rituals for her to do. She also had to build a medicine wheel, and they gave me a specific prayer she had to repeat over and over again for 24 hours. Well, I sit down with her. I tell her everything. She's bawling. She was crying her eyes out because she was a very spiritual person in this lifetime. She was so sorry for what she saw as her past life and what happened. And I said, listen, they told me all these things you have to do and that I am not allowed to help you do it. You have to do it. So I, you know, I left her with that. She got busy on what I need. She needed to do. And a week later, the newspapers came back and wanted to uh, re-interview us because she was 100% healed. Well, yeah, once you understand the genesis of anything, you can heal it, which is why I'm writing about reincarnation in my past life in Auschwitz. Actually, when I went to Auschwitz, I sat there where Mengele was selecting people, and then I realized the stuff that I had done and why I came back in this lifetime to be humanitarian. And alone, you know, if I've never been married, don't have any children, it's for me to be there for other human beings. You can see how bad I must have been in that past life. Well, I sat there at Auschwitz, Birkenau, and for three hours just sat down and I took in everything. I kept saying, please forgive me, please forgive me. And then I heard a voice saying, no, you must forgive yourself. And after that, boom, it was over. Right. Well, you know... uh... I was happy to do that for her. I did that in a lot of places, not just here. I I, I did a lot of work in California as well at that time Mm -hmm. uh, because people would call me to come clear their homes. And let me tell you, I came across some pretty crazy stuff. Some of it was pretty scary. I can imagine that, Maria. The thing about it is it's about time for people to learn on their own. I mean, we can help only so many people, you know. And the thing is, is that uh, this is why I think we do our show, because we're giving the listeners tools to help them help themselves. Exactly. You know, so when you talk about your your experiences, or I'll talk about mine, it's to show you that we're not bullshitting you. Well, yeah. We're telling you that this works. Well, you know, I remember one house where they built the house right over a a Native American cemetery. Uh, I, I mean, in California, you know, very similar things where the land was not respected, you know, whether it was a graveyard or whatever. Uh, and, you know, the new owners have no idea of this. It's not something your realtor is going to tell you about what happened when the blue coats <laughs> arrived and slaughtered, you know, an entire tribe. And I've seen a lot of that in Arizona. Uh, I can imagine. But I will tell you this. I have worked with a lot of different tools in my life. I'm sure you have, too. You know, oh, yeah. from tarot to crystals to, you know, divining yeah. rods, whatever you want to call it. I have yet to ever see anything as powerful as working with the medicine wheel, ever. Yeah. And we I listen. think that's your, your thing. I think because everybody resonates to something different. Right. You know, and I think that that is truly, you've got some past lives with that major Oh, yeah. I mean, I I know a lot of my past lives, but I won't mention them on air because that's who I used to be. I don't need to impress anybody with who I used to be. It's hard enough being Maria Heller this time around. Well, Uh, we're a collective of every single lifetime, you know, because I was, and I'm not going to get into this. This is my past life. It's my business. But I can tell you that the more you know, the more you know that you don't know. Exactly. And it's always a good idea to learn something new every exactly. single day, period. And for my listeners out there, I have a full-length video on how to build and work with a medicine wheel. Or I was shot when I was in my 40s, so you can see how cute and chubby I was. Uh, on the site, uh, <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a full-length book on it on the site as an e-book. Uh, and listen, there's a lot of Sun Bear's work that's still around. But once Sun Bear crossed over, he came to me and told me to take it to the next level. And I said, what do you mean take it to the next level? He says, make it where everyone can use it. In other words, it's no longer just a tool for Native Americans. Make it where everyone feels comfortable. And that's how the universal medicine wheel came in. That whole story is in the book. Uh, but you know, some people may say, oh, this is all pretty crazy. 
But to me, if it works, don't fix it. That's always been my motto. Absolutely. Don't reinvent the wheel. And there's so many tools out there. This is why we teach. Well, I call the book Reinventing the Wheel. (laughs) You resonate to the tool that you like the most and start using that one. Keep it simple. Right. And then start adding to your repertoire of different tools and then share them with other people. Right. Well, even as a Reiki master, okay, I have a, a new student coming in this weekend. On the solstice is the best time to get your attunements. Uh, so she'll be getting her second level. I have a wonderful gal coming in next month from Virginia to get her master's level. I do those attunements inside my medicine wheel. And that's why my students have stronger Reiki than anyone else. Mm-hmm. Because it's an amplifier of all things good. Bingo, an amplifier. Right. Right. So, you know, there's a reason that, you know, here in Sedona, as soon as, uh, you know, people go up there for their spiritual journeys uh, and they'll build a medicine wheel. Well, the Parks Department will dismantle them immediately. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you know, we one went... thing that people can do right now is uh, go to their backyard if you have grass or soil or whatever. Take your shoes off and stand there for about 10 minutes. Or if you can't stand, sit on a chair. Make sure that your feet are touching the ground and just... Feel Mother Earth's love coming into your being and filling you. That's a great way to balance and Absolutely. use nature. Absolutely. And, and Marie was talking about how you have to approach, the, you know, a house or a job or whatever and make sure that you're letting it know your intention. Please do it when you go up to a tree. Don't just hug it. Ask the tree if you can hug it because trees are afraid of humans. They've been cut down and burnt down and everything. Oh, yeah. They don't really trust humans. So you've got to... Always do that with nature. You know, Absolutely. even when I pick my lemons from the tree, I just thank it for this lemon. And I, I just give it a tug. And if it gives, that means it's ready to give itself to me. But that's you about know? living in a sacred manner. I told one, one of my friends this week, even when I trim my trees, I rake them first. And I say, I'm just yeah. doing this for your benefit. I'm not going to hurt you. And the yeah. when I forgot to do that once, you know, some of these trees got some pretty gnarly thorns on them. I was like all sliced up. And I was oh, like, oh, my oh God. I, I guess I, sh- I guess I forgot. I forgot to so let there. them know. Right? So you'll, you'll always get a reminder. Mommy, we need to take a short break when we get back. We're going to okay. talk about something else that I find very interesting is why do some things show up in a reading and some things don't? So oh, stay good. with us. I love that. Yeah, stay with us. We'll be right World got you down. Feel like you're lost? don't know the best direction for your life, whether it's love, money, or purpose? A session with Maria can help you get the clarity you need and the direction you need to live your best life possible. Maria's been doing this professionally for almost 40 years. Why not get the help you need by scheduling a session with Maria today? Check out the link for private consultations with Maria. You'll be glad you did. Subscribers to her show get a $50 discount on either a 15-minute or half-hour session with Maria. Book now. Now, back to the show. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Awaken with Maria and Monica. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Maybe hearing some stories you haven't heard before. Don't judge us. We're not crazy. We're just in tune. Uh, Monica, you do... Testimonials, Maria, is sometimes the best way to teach people. Because instead of saying, like, oh, wow, they can say, well... Why not me? I could do it. Yeah, you Everybody can. can do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody. Listen, even when I used to teach, when I teach Reiki or I taught Tarot, there's always going to be a student that's better than the, the rest. And the only reason that is, is because I know in a past life, they probably already were Reiki masters. And they're remembering. Exactly. So they have a little more of a gift, but there's nothing supernatural about it. Everyone has a sixth sense. Everyone can develop it. To what mm-hmm. level depends on, on how far you want to go. And I always tell people, once you get started on this journey, you can't go back. You can stop, but you can't go back. You can't That's forget right. where you've been and what you know. It's kind of like... the of the universe, uh, think, you know, think in terms of energy, frequency, vibration. That's the secret of the universe. And we all resonate to each other. So the key is to stay... You know, like, uh, what's his name? Einstein said this. He said, this is not philosophy. This is physics. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So we understand physics and energy and vibration. 
and dimensions, you can master this lifetime. Right. Well, we you stay look- too much in that third dimension, which has to do with left brain emotions, mm-hmm. and, and the emotions keep us in our past. Absolutely. It doesn't mean we can't feel anything, but when the emotions right. come up, they're coming up so you can let them go. That's it. Well, Not you know, listen. Out. <laughs> right. But you look at Einstein. You look at Thomas Jefferson. You look at Leonardo da Vinci. The, you know, those are the top three that come to my mind right now. These men. And Nikola Tesla. And Tesla. They were super spiritually evolved. You mm-hmm. could see it in their writings. You could see it in their work. You could see it in their drawings. Uh, and everyone can do that, okay? This world, though, is set up to just kind of put blinders on everybody and tell you, oh, that's evil, or that's the devil's work, or, you know, whatever they want to call it. But this is something that everybody can learn, and everybody can do. Uh, But I wanted to shift to what I said before the break. I mean, I don't, you've probably been doing readings as long as I have. I started reading for other people in the early 1980s. Okay, I started in 1972. Okay, so you got me I'm just a little ahead of you because I I started receiving information from the other side in 1962 at age 11. Well, I was... I knew where I was going. Right. That's why my past life in Auschwitz put me on my path really early. Well, in 1972, I was busy having my daughter. Uh, (laughs) But that doesn't mean... Well, I didn't have any kids. I I never got married. I wasn't supposed to have a personal life. But that's another thing. For some people, it's just that's not why they're here. You know, I can't tell you. I would say a good 15% of the people I do private sessions with, they did not come into this life to have what I call the typical usual life, the house, the kids, the marriage, you know, the the white picket fence, the bullshit. They're here for a greater purpose. They can have those things, but they're never going to be number one in their life. I mean, listen, I've been married, you know, I've been married three times. I got my kids, I got my grandchildren. But the truth of the matter is the thing that gets me up in the morning is my work. Same here. And, you know, people say, well, don't you miss not having kids or husbands? Of course I do. I'm human. But I know that I had to do this from a very early age. I remember getting my first message in June of 1962. I won't say who it came from, but it was there. And... So I realized very early, I used to watch a show called One Step Beyond back in the early 60s. I remember that and show. I used to watch it with my dad. And I said, Dad, I want to do that. Because those were all true metaphysical stories and spiritual stories. Dad, I want to mind read. Dad, I want to be able to do that. Dad, you know, <clears throat> and he would just look at me and just say, okay. <laughs> if you've never seen one of those shows look them up they're scarier than crap oh my gosh they were scary and, and the host was scary too Bob so, uh, Newell or Newell I, I don't remember the host oh, god that was a long time ago it was in the early 60s 61 62 yeah okay. so I mean I started early because I knew that was my and I was going to be an interpreter I, I know three languages but I wanted to speak five and I wanted to work at the UN. Well, that didn't happen. I ended up interpreting spirit instead. <laughs> well, it's funny because I always thought I would speak at the UN. That never happened. So, so <laughs> that's another thing we have in common. All right, so let's get yeah. back to it because I know you do a lot of sessions for people. And I would say that, you know, I'm not going to brag and say, oh, yeah, I'm 100% right. I would say, you know, probably 60, nope. 70% of what I pick up is, is accurate, yeah. uh, which is better odds than you're ever going to get in Vegas. Uh, yeah, but sometimes people will say, well, this happened. You know, I had a car accident or this and that. How come you didn't see it? Or how come you didn't mention it in the reading? And I'm yeah. sure that's happened to you as well. Yeah, well, you know, what I learned from my teacher, either came back in uh, 1969, 70, and 71, is that you never give anyone bad news, first of all, because when it happens, they're going to blame you. Number two, you have to look for the solution. In other words, you can see what, what decisions they're making and the decisions can lead them to some terrible consequences. So I always tell them, you know, this is going to have, you know, if you continue making these choices, the consequences will be great and it'll continue to get worse until you finally wake up because that's why, why right. it's happening. So, but there's other events that, that never come to us. You don't ever see it because it's none of our business. We're not supposed to know it's their lesson. Exactly. So, I mean, I didn't see the pandemic coming. Right. I didn't, I didn't see it. That's, no, that's but you know what? Is. I've had three of my clients get in touch with me who had uh, I had done reads for, and they were planning trips, one to Italy, one to, I don't know, different places outside the country, and they asked in advance, and I said, don't go. You need to change those plans. Now, I didn't see the virus coming, but 
they both three of them actually wrote me just this week thank god that you told me not to go and because with the virus there'd be no way that i could be there now right exactly Uh, Exactly. so sometimes you know i taught to row for many years and the one thing that i taught my students from the get-go is you have to know what to say and what not to say and how to say it exactly you have to learn that i mean that's just and people that some people just say, oh, I'm going to pay $20 and get my palm read at some gypsy's house, and you know, with their shingle outside. And so they end up getting all this crap information that they think they have no power over. And so they always say, well, I'm going to do Novena for you, and I'm going to clear right. it out for $150 more. And, you know, don't ever go there, okay, because they're, they're just charlatans. Uh, you know, we do have the power with it, but if you don't have it, use tools. Use things like pendulums. Use signs. I always use signs. Like I interviewed someone for a roommate. If this is not the right person, I want to see a yellow canary in 12 hours. I didn't see the yellow canary. And when you train your mind like that with signs, it will give you the sign, and it will give you the right answer. Exactly. So you can use those tools. You, you know, I love using signs because that's the universe works in pictures, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I always do that. And it's real important for us to understand. Like I got yelled at one time for stupid things. This guy, I, 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 you're going to marry this brunette. She's beautiful. You're going to get engaged to her by next year. He called me back. He goes, well, you were wrong. I'm like, you know, my girlfriend that I'm engaged to is a blonde. I said, but does the carpet match the uh, drape? And he goes, oh, that's right. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> She's a brunette. <laughs> and we started laughing. Oh, that's the thing. Lady, yeah, that that happens a lot. And I say, you know, people dye their hair. So don't get stuck People on the hair, hair. color. Right. Or they, you know, it's, it's interesting the way things play out. I told this girl, I said, you're going to win this lottery and uh, this prize, and you're going to go to Brazil, and you're going to take your mother to Brazil. And she goes, well, that's not, I never enter in contests like that. You're just wrong. And then about six months later, she called me back. She says, guess what? My mother's the one that entered the contest. We won a trip to Brazil, and she took me. So, you know, it's not like 100% right, but she ended up going to freaking Brazil and with her mother. I get tired of getting yelled at every once in a while. But you know what? Sometimes sometimes there are things that people are not supposed to know. And then you have the other thing, because when I read for people, I tell them, I'm reading your Akashic Records. This is the blueprint you created for yourself for this life. Right. And it's it's called reading, right? Right. And it's usually the best possible uh direction for them i say but i always tell them do whatever you want when you hang up this phone okay but this Mm -hmm. is you know i like to give people door number a and what happens is people want to exercise their free will and they don't follow the plan they made for themselves and then the shit hits the fan because none of it's cut in stone you can change it at any time but that but that doesn't mean you're changing it for the better so what we're reading is a blueprint of your a collective choices, and it shows up as a blueprint like a construction worker can read a blueprint, architect can read a blueprint. It's a snapshot. And so what we're reading is your blueprint. That's why it's called a reading. But you can change it at any time, but that's not our fault. Exactly. You made a different choice. Exactly. You know, I remember once I read for this woman in New York, and when we were done, she said to me, wow, that was pretty boring. So I looked at her and I said, you got a boring life. What do you want from me? (laughs) And as soon as I told her that, she, I think she woke up in that sentence. She woke up and she created such a magnificent, fun life for herself after that. It was like a different person. It was a wake up call you gave her and she needed to hear that. You know, I've I've told people when they say they're spiritual, I go, no, you're not. And they go, what do you mean? They get insulted and they start yelling. You're not spiritual. I said, you know spiritual things, but you don't apply it. Mm -hmm. Because spirituality is what we do and how we live our lives. It's not what we know. That's like if you know how to drive a car, but you never get behind the wheel. Right. You know, you've got to take action. And and once I explain it that way, then they understand. I said, all you do is whine every single day. You're always fearful. You're always worried. You might go to church on Sunday, but the rest of the week you're complaining. Mm -hmm. That's not spiritual. Right. You know, peace is spiritual. Joy is spiritual. Love is spiritual. Not whining and complaining and stuff. I'm so direct, Maria. That must be my Aries and Taurus. Oh, know? I am too. I am too. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, we're both fire signs, you know, and I, we don't have a filter. I have to uh, cut through the bull. It's like, let you know, we got a half hour. Let's make this work. Uh, oh, yeah. I had a lady one time. 
you know, she, I was on a radio show uh, in San Jose, California, and she was one of the employees. She goes, oh, so do you think, what, what sex is my baby going to be? And back then I was stupid enough to give that information, which I refuse to do now because of this experience. And I said, well, I see a little bouncing baby boy with curly locks and his dark brown hair, and he's so cute. And so she comes back to me uh, like a month later. She goes, well, the sonogram says it's going to be a girl. So you're wrong. And I said, well, all I can tell you is what I received. And then she comes back to me a couple of months later. She says, I miscarried the baby. Why did you tell me I was going to miscarry? I said, why? So you can blame me? I'm not going to get that information for you. Mm -hmm. And then if I did, you'd say it was my fault that I was the one that caused the, the, um, you know, the spontaneous uh, miscarriage. I said, so I didn't receive that information. Well, lo and behold, she goes, well, you're just a crappy reader. Uh, well, two years later, she contacts me. She goes, well, I got pregnant and had my baby boy, and just like you, you described him, he's like curly-haired, chubby, and he's on my lap. And he must have been 18 months by that time, and uh, or maybe a little bit less. But anyway, I said, I told you I just see the end result. Right. I can't give you the stuff in between. Right. And so it's like people, when you get a reading, please be a little bit compassionate. This is not... Uh, you know, like 100% proven science, we can get bits and pieces of information for you. But not everything's going to be revealed all the time. You know, I mean, it's like they think we're having conversations with the other side because they're they're so clear. That information in that broadcast, especially because I'm telepathic, it comes in and out. Like if you're turning on a radio, really late at night you get stations from farther away, but then they come in and then they go back out, they Mm -hmm. fade, and they come back in. That's how it is with us. It's not always clear cut right. and some things we're just not supposed to know especially i will not predict that well no but i will say this if i see some danger coming down the road and i know people pretty well and some of my clients have been with me you know for 30 years yeah. i know what they can handle and i know what they can't so i will give them the information i feel they can handle in other words you know they've been sick for a long time you know they're over being here blah 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 and I can see That's that they're going to take that turn. And I will tell them, not that you're going to drop dead. What I'll say is it's time to get your affairs in order. Uh, if I feel that they're evolved enough to handle that. Because, listen, there's too that. many. You'll, you'll be able to decide right. that. But Definitely. there's too many variables when it comes to death. Okay. Yeah. Some people hold well, on. Too. Right. Some people hold on way longer than their contract. And it amazes me that they're not dead. And I'm like. What are they so afraid of? They should have let go like a year or two ago, and yet they're still here. You know, I heard here. from this lady who passed away with my client for years named Darlene, and she was, uh, came through after she passed away. She goes, I don't know why I was holding on so much. Mm-hmm. I was miserable, you know, on earth, and I was yet holding on so tightly I didn't want to cross over. Yet when I crossed over, I had more happiness, more peace. I'm like, I just didn't understand how great it was going to be here. Mm-hmm. And it, please tell people not to hold on for the wrong reasons, especially if they've had a miserable life. Let go. Right. Let go for sure. You know, earlier <laughs> at the beginning of this conversation, you mentioned uh, what I would call the power of uh, mass consciousness. Yeah. Uh, and I've experienced that, you know, in everyday life twice. Really only twice. Mm -hmm. Uh, One was when I was lucky enough, I think it was 1975, to get tickets to see Elvis live. Okay. Mm -hmm. The energy in that room, I swear to you, Monica, you could have had a toaster and plugged it into the air and it would have Mm -hmm. burned itself out. The amount of concentration and excitement was probably one of the most electric experiences I have ever had. You could feel the electricity literally going yeah. through you. The other one was at <laughs> the other one was at a hockey game uh, with the New York Islanders. They had a player named Mike Bossy, uh, who he needed to get three goals. He had three minutes to get three goals. Okay. And, yeah. and it was an important game. I don't know if it was, you know, the, the end of the, the year games or a championship game or whatever. 60,000 people in the arena in New York. Quiet as church, Monica. Everybody focused on that one player on the ice. Oh, my gosh. He gets one in. Everybody goes crazy. Quiet yeah. again. He's got now, get this. A minute and a half to get two more. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know Mm -hmm. if you know hockey, but that's like a physical impossibility. (laughs) Well, 
I was there. I, I was there. I mean, I witnessed this. Uh, it was like the whole audience was paralyzed and everybody's eyes were on this guy. And yeah. he slaps another one in. He's got 11 seconds left. Okay. Right. 11 seconds, which meant he had to skate down the ice and slam it in. Okay. He oh, gets... I totally, I totally hear what you're saying, right. Maria. Listen, he gets the third goal. The entire 60,000 at the Nassau Coliseum, which was built, you know, with cement floors, everything. Yeah. We all jumped out of our seats up and down. At the same time, the arena mm -hmm. literally shook. Oh, yeah. We, we, did, we went through the same thing when we had Colin Kaepernick as our quarterback. He scored three touchdowns in 90 seconds. Right. So this, I know this about is, that intensity right. because I'm a Niner fan since I was like 15 years old. And Colin Kaepernick happened to be my favorite quarterback of all time. And I'm glad to see what's going on with him now. He's right. really getting right. recognition. But, you know, if you don't mind, I got it because you brought up music. Right. I got to tell you. When I was contacted, because uh, my brother-in-law uh, saw that Ron Howard was putting out a notice that he was looking for footage from Beatles concerts from Live Without Any Sound, and I had a Super 8 movie of the Beatles concert in 1966, which was the very last one at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. They never performed after that except one time on the roof in London. So I wrote a letter. Tickets were 8.50, by the way, for the best one. Right. You had to send in cash. So I thought, I need good tickets here. Okay. And... I wrote a letter, and I said, I'm just a 15-year-old. I said, I'm nobody special. I said, however, I'm another fan that if I, I, I bet you if I was a celebrity, you'd probably send me the best six seats in the house. So I sent in my uh, $17 in cash. I get back two tickets in row two at Candlestick Park, which is between home plate and first base. And uh, that's what happens when you ask and you get creative. So I took video of the Beatles as they walked in front of me and some, on, on stage and stuff. They were on second base. And I finally found the footage because they were looking for it. I found it using a pendulum because this is stuff from the 60s now. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted the producers. And my footage is in the Ron Howard movie about the Beatles live called Eight Days a Week. It was put out about two years ago. So right. that was like meant to be. It, and it's like you can manipulate and do anything you want, not in a negative way, but I'm saying about, you know, just look, this is who right. I am. But if I was really rich and a celebrity, I know you'd give me great seats. And they gave me great seats. Well, I want and you I was to know. I to an Elvis concert. Maria, oh. I didn't go. Oh, and I was man. working at Liberty House. It was, a, it was a store, like a Penny's or, you know, right. only upper scale. And I, I was working in the cosmetic department, and all the girls said, come on, Monica, let's go to Vegas and go, not Vegas, uh, let's go to Reno and see Elvis. Nah, I didn't feel like going. Well, <laughs> yeah. they came back after that week, and they said, Monica, you should have gone with us. We were invited to his hotel, and we partied with him all night, and I was oh, like, oh, man. Yeah, are you kidding me? <laughs> and I, I didn't listen to I, myself, and I should have. And I got two tickets to see Elvis for $25. <laughs> <laughs> Monty, we're almost out of time, but I want to let you know that movie, Eight Days a Week by the Beatles, is being yeah. uh, advertised on Hulu. They've got it playing all week. Okay, uh, my footage is the last one because it was the last concert, and you'll see my name in the in the uh, credits. Aha, uh -huh. well, I'm going so, to so check it. I went to see that concert with my brother. He was I was 15, and he was five years young. He was 10. Hmm. And my parents let us go on the train by ourselves from, from Silicon Valley. It, was, it wasn't Silicon Valley then, but it was Santa Clara, California. And we took the train and went by ourselves. And uh, so I see I have footage of us being so young. <laughs> and um, as we sat down in row two, he was on the end seat, and I was one, you know, next to him to the right. When we went to the movie theater, it filled up so quickly. We sat down, and I said, Henry, my brother, do you see where we're sitting? And he said, yeah. So I said, where were we sitting at the concert? He goes, row two. I said, where are we now? He goes, row two. And the MC, and I was the one right next. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Syn MC. Synchronicity. Monty, I want to thank you for a pretty quick hour of interesting stuff. Oh, no, for sure. it's over. I know. But uh, hopefully, hopefully the <laughs> listenership has enjoyed this. And if you like these kind of stories and would like us to tell some more, just send me some emails because we got plenty of them. Yeah. I, I will. Uh, my book. Uh, right. 
I, I've got a bunch of my, because I'm writing a book right now called uh, The Journey of a Happy Medium, and it only took two lifetimes, and I've got a whole bunch of anecdotes in there as well. Oh, good. So, uh, but I'm working on two books right now, because Maria, you're the one that said, wait a minute, this looks like two books, not one. Right. And I, I thought to myself, you know what, she's right. This is two books, not just one. So I'm not, I'm not split them. Well, good. Well, I'm looking for forward advice. to them. <laughs> you take care, doll. We'll talk soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, folks. Bye. Monica, Monica monica.com. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting the show. It's always a pleasure to talk about spiritual things when we're living in such crazy times because it takes us to a better place. So again, thanks for supporting the show and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening and supporting the Maria Show. Tell others what you learned today. Knowledge becomes wisdom only when it's shared. Encourage others to subscribe today. www.maria.net Often imitated, never duplicated. A world of information all in one place. www.maria.net Always ahead of the curve. Always on your side. Get active or get radioactive. Subscribe today.